Hello and welcome to uh, the newest edition of uh, Build Your AutoCAD IQ. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, cloud rendering in AutoCAD 2017. Uh, my name is uh, David Pothier and I'm uh, going to be working with uh, Victoria and Michael as uh, our co-presenters and uh, kind of the guy behind the scenes answering some questions. Uh, we, uh, go ahead and up to the next slide here. So uh, we're going to show you how you can create some really nice renderings uh, today uh, using the cloud service. So just a little teaser slide here with uh, some images uh, of a chess set and such that uh, was rendered inside of AutoCAD. Uh, and Victoria will cover a little bit about how all this works. Um, as I said, uh, my name is uh, David. I'm here in uh, Manchester, New Hampshire, and uh, Victoria is also here based in Manchester. Uh, Michael is one of our uh, support technicians based in uh, Boston, Mass. So uh, we're happy to uh, cover some of this information for you. Uh, before we get started, just to uh, let you know that uh, we will be, um, you know, we, we do encourage you to ask questions. So uh, if you have any kind of questions, please uh, go ahead and log those in the uh, chat window. Uh, the links to the, all these materials are available in a number of places, the uh, registration reminder, the uh, post webinar survey, as well as in the chat window. So if you want to get any of the materials, the PowerPoint, the uh, data sets, etc., you can get them from any of these different locations. And the session is being recorded. Um, also, we just want to mention that uh, during the presentation, uh, we'd like you to, to think about some of the things that uh, have been covered over the last year or so in this particular session with uh, you know, the 3D session. And if you have any suggestions about items that uh, we haven't covered about modeling or rendering or anything uh, in the kind of the higher end of uh, AutoCAD features, uh, please add your suggestions into the chat window as well, and we will capture that information and uh, consider doing a session on some of these additional topics. So keep that in mind, and, and please give us some feedback as we, as we go through in the presentation today. Um, there are, uh, are a number of uh, web webinars coming up, so uh, we do this each week. Um, the next webinar is on uh, tips and tricks, uh, setting up a template in, uh, in AutoCAD 2017. Uh, and the 22nd, we're doing uh, back to basics and introduction of tables. Uh, on the 29th, working with fields. And on the 6th, we'll be doing another 3D uh, or third dimension uh, topic, which is yet to be determined uh, and may be determined based on what information they provide us. Um, there's some links here in the uh, PowerPoint on uh, the uh, webinar playlist and uh, other information that you can access. So, uh, you know, if you download this PowerPoint, you have access to all these various links. Uh, also, I want to just make sure that people know about the Knowledge Network, uh, knowledge.autodesk.com. Uh, lots of great information here, everything from service packs and downloads to uh, articles that folks like us uh, create for um, you know, troubleshooting AutoCAD and uh, information you need to know. So if you haven't been to knowledge.autodesk.com, please uh, visit there as well. Uh, so this week's agenda we're going to get into in, in just a second, but before we do, I think we want to just do a couple of polls. So uh, let me run through some of these. So the first one is, uh, is, is this your first Autodesk webinar? So have you been to one of these before, or have you, uh, this being your first time? And it's looking like the vast majority of people have been to one of these before, which is great, and also have uh, some new people. So it's great seeing some new folks here. So let me go ahead and close that one and share it just so you can see it. And I just want to see a little bit about uh, which application you're currently using, whether you're using AutoCAD or LT or are they vertical products or something completely different. And unlike most webinars, it seems to be like neck and neck with the AutoCAD verticals and AutoCAD, so that's interesting. That's great news, Dave, because uh, all of those programs have this uh, rendering service and 3D modeling within them. So. Right. Yeah. So uh, I can see that uh, 
35% AutoCAD and 29% of the point of the vertical. So it's, uh, it's great. Uh, actually, more than that, if you include Civil 3D and Map in there. And uh, which other uh, poll did you want to see? Uh, which do you usually render from AutoCAD? Yeah, that one yeah. right there. Okay. I'd like to know a little bit about the audience today. If you were using any uh, uh, rendering tools within AutoCAD, uh, if you're actually using the cloud rendering tools already, um, if you've tried them but maybe aren't really sure uh, what to do with them, um, if you've never done it at all, maybe if you're rendering with a different application, let us know here. Looks like uh, a lot of people haven't rendered yet, but maybe we'll uh, spark some interest here and uh, get some additional people to start using the tools. So let me go ahead and close that one and share that. So. 25% uh, using rendering inside of AutoCAD, only a few using the cloud rendering at this time, but uh, we'll show some information here and hopefully inspect some interest. And I think that's all for now, right? That is all, yeah. Okay. So welcome. I'm really glad to have you all here. I hope you're interested in learning a little bit about cloud rendering in AutoCAD. Um, this will cover our Autodesk 360 rendering service from the AutoCAD side of things. Uh, now this rendering service is also available in other Autodesk products like Revit, Navisworks, Fusion 360, uh, 3ds Max. So if you use any of those other programs, this um, parts of this may also be applicable to you. Uh, if you've never used it, this will be a great introduction. Uh, if you've ever, um, if you have trouble rendering within AutoCAD natively, uh, if, you, if you shy away from it because it uh, takes a long time, then you might try out this rendering service because it will free up your machine. Um, so that is one of the, the main benefits here is that you can free up your resources so that you can continue modeling on your local machine and hand that rendering process over to Autodesk in order to quickly uh, get a feel for what your rendering looks like. Okay. So I will jump right into AutoCAD here and we'll get started. So you might recognize this um, model here. I've added a table so that we can just get some context when we start talking about uh, some of the outside renderings. The, um, the chessboard here looked a little bit odd in some of the um, rendering backgrounds. So I've added a little bit of context. I hope it helps. Uh, you'll recognize this model though from previous webinars that we've done where we went through and modeled the table, uh, the chess table, chessboard, um, using some of the modeling tools here in AutoCAD as well as all of the chess pieces. We added materials to them in a previous webinar as well. Um, and so here we are. Um, I've added a, just a general wood um, texture to this table to give it um, some some realism and from here we'll um, we'll start talking about uh, how to prepare your model for the cloud rendering service. Um, so from here uh, if you want to lend a, a realistic look to your model um, what you want to do is prepare that model the way that we have in, in these previous webinars leading up uh, by adding those materials, adding your lights um, and the rendering service will only work on drawing files that have 3D solids and surfaces in them. It can't render 2D geometry and it can't render any paper space views. But what it can do is um, pull the named views out of your drawing. So there's a previous webinar, and maybe Dave or Michael will link this in the chat window. There's a previous webinar about um, named views and cameras in AutoCAD. Those come in really handy here. And I'll show you really quickly. If I wanted to save this view, maybe I um, uh, shift and middle mouse button and 3D orbit and turn on my perspective. And maybe I like this view here and I want to save it. I can type in the view command and I'll save myself a view. Now for time's sake, I've gone in and created uh, several views here. I've named them so that they make sense. Um, I've got a, a view of a detail of one of the pieces, a couple of perspectives, um, a couple of closer perspectives, and we'll take a look at those when we uh, actually export to the cloud rendering service. Um, you can also get to them here 
by dropping this menu down and going to custom model views and taking a look. These are all of my custom names views in the drawing. And these, uh, you can pick and choose from them or render them all at the same time. So that's an important uh, setup. You should um, have at least one camera. So if you set up a per perspective view, it'll automatically put one camera there in the drawing for you. Uh, any sun and sky settings, any geolocation, uh, that information is um, should be saved with the viewport and um, it'll come out with you uh, when the when the file is exported. Uh, default lighting will be converted to photometric lights uh, when it is uploaded to the service. Um, so default lighting isn't supported, but it will be converted so that um, it'll just give all of your objects um, a non-illuminated diffuse color. So whatever co color the object is, it'll, um, it'll light it up so you don't end up with a completely black render, but it won't have realistic looking lighting. Um, so you want to add at least one photometric light to your drawing. Um, those old distant and point lights aren't supported. Um, they will be converted to photometric lights. Um, your materials, if you're working in uh, any drawing file that was created in AutoCAD 2010, only the materials that came with the software in the materials library, unaltered, are compatible. But if you open the drawing and save it in AutoCAD 2011 or later and convert those mater custom materials, custom materials are supported from 2011 on. Okay, so a couple of notes about um, custom materials and external references. You can e-transmit your file. So if I use the e-transmit command, if I spell it right, there we go. Um, oh, you need to save it first. Um, so if I create an e-transmit file, though, you'll get this dialog box. You just want to make sure that um, all of your JPEG and PNG image files are here. Um, if you go to, um, I believe it's transmittal setups, you can tell it to include textures and materials right here uh, under include options. You can also include fonts and things like this if um, it's a, a quick tip about eTransmit. Um, a little unrelated there, but uh, include textures from materials. Um, check that box and then e-transmit that file, it'll create a zip folder or a, a zip file for you. And then um, there's a way to upload this whole e-transmit into uh, the cloud rendering service to include your custom materials or to include any external references that you want to be able to reference when you render. Okay. So in order to um, minimize the amount of time that it takes to process the render. You can save the file and remove anything that isn't uh, necessary for the render. So if you have extra geometry in the file, strip that all out and get the file down to as, as uh, small a file as possible. Um, and that'll speed up the time that it takes to process the render. Um, let's see, what else? Okay, uh, and then one quick note on what it won't um, what the cloud rendering service does not support. So uh, it's not really relevant in AutoCAD, but in programs like 3ds Max, for example, um, fog is not supported in the cloud rendering. Um, text and mText, uh, they need to be converted to meshes first if you want them to show up. Otherwise, they, don't, uh, they won't show up. Um, your standard lights and distant lights will all be converted to, um, they're automatically converted to photometric lights. So they are not supported, but they'll, they'll be converted for you. Um, the same goes for default lights. They'll show up as that just non-illuminated diffuse color, whatever that object color is. And any background overrides that you have set up on your views, those won't show up either. All right, so um, that covers the AutoCAD preparation portion. So now let's get into the interesting stuff. Um, uh, Victoria, uh, yes. quick question, if I can interrupt you here for sure. a moment. Yeah. Um, this is a question about uh, what portion of this is uh, applicable to AutoCAD LT. So what, if anything, is available in LT versus just AutoCAD? This is not available in AutoCAD LT. Yep, the, 3D, the whole 3D webinar series is, is pretty much 
um, in the full AutoCAD product only, and and all the AutoCAD verticals. Okay. Um, all right. So from here, we will pick up uh, with the cloud rendering. So. From here, just to acclimate you, we are in that same 3D modeling workspace. So down in the right-hand corner, click that workspace gear. Uh, you can access the cloud rendering tools from either the 3D basics or 3D modeling workspace. Uh, you can add them to a custom workspace if uh, that's your thing. So from here, I am on the Visualize tab. And you can see my, my view manager here shows me all my named views. So I've got those all set up, they're ready to go. I've saved my file. And if you come over here, uh, there are two options. Okay, so you have this A360 panel over here on the Visualize tab, and you have two options, Render in the Cloud and Render Gallery. The Render Gallery will bring you to your Render Gallery. Uh, so if you have cloud renderings, this will just take you right out to the internet uh, using your default browser. You can also use the Show Render Gallery command. Um, and then render online is the command that will start the cloud rendering for your file. Now before we do this though, if you click this and you haven't signed into Autodesk 360, you'll get a prompt to do that. Um, right up here, you can sign in. And you have to be signed into the Autodesk 360, uh, your Autodesk 360 account in order for this to work. Um, so from here, I'll click on the render in cloud icon here and we'll take a look at some of the settings. So from here I've set up all my model views and you'll see them show up in the list here. Now you can pick render just the current view. So if I had a custom view that I was rotated to that I just wanted to quickly um, see in the rendering, uh, then I could just use that current view. I can select all of my model views or if I just want to render one of these I can pick any of the named views in my drawing. Uh, what you'll notice that doesn't show up are the um, named views that come with the program in every drawing. Uh, all those um, views that are associated with the view cube, so your left, right, front, top, those won't show up in here. So if you want one of those to show up, and I've done that here um, with the top details, you can just save a named view in the top um, or, or whichever uh, standard view you're, you're looking for, just name a current view, or name a, um, a custom view for that, and it'll show up. Um, you can have the service notify you when the rendering is complete, so if you don't want to sit there and, and watch it, then um, you can uh, have it notify you by email. And then from here, you click on Start Rendering. If you haven't saved the drawing, It'll prompt you to save it before you, um, uh, before the rendering starts. And then you'll see up here in the right-hand corner, that little wheel will start spinning, uh, indicating that the rendering is uh, in progress. And then you can take a look here. Uh, it lets me know that it is being rendered online in my Autodesk account. And then if you want to view the rendering progress, there's a link right here to do that. This will bring you out to the same place that clicking on the render gallery icon over here will. Okay, so it has, can I get that back? There we go. Yep, if you lose that little icon, you can click on your, your name here, and all the way down the bottom, rendering in progress. If you click on that, it'll launch your um, default web browser and bring you out to your account. Now, if you have never logged in here before, um, you will come up to this page here. So we'll wait for that to, to render in the background, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, the rendering uh, website. So the first thing to note is that the address you want to type in is rendering.360.autodesk.com, and maybe Dave and Michael could pop that in the chat window for you if you want to follow along. So if you go here and you're not logged into your Autodesk account, it'll bring you to the, the default gallery page. And there are a bunch of tools here that are useful. A um, bunch of resources. Uh, so from here, I'll start on the right. You can sign in. Um, and then there are resources here for the rendering help, a bunch of videos about rendering, uh, the frequently asked questions. Uh, this gets updated periodically. So if, um, if you have some questions about it, you might want to check back here. And the uh, Autodesk Knowledge Network page for cloud rendering. 
Uh, there's also a community section here. So there are forums dedicated to the rendering service as well as a blog run by the rendering as a service team. There's a link to the gallery and your own renderings that will prompt, if I click this while I'm signed out, it will prompt me to log in and a new icon which we'll uh, look at in a second here. So this did log me in um, and I have a couple here. I have a whole bunch of things in here, don't I? Um, there we go. So, let me just minimize that. Okay, so there are a couple of things that I have done here um, in preparation and we'll take a look at each of them. So, this page here will show you a list of all of your rendered files that you've sent to the rendering service. Um, if you want to upload a zip file um, that you e-transmitted from the program, say it has custom materials or it has, um, or it has external references attached to it that you want to include. Okay, so this brings me back in. I'll click on that new icon again. And from here, um, you get a couple of options. And uh, this select a file, though, is uh, what we're looking for uh, in order to render that uh, e-transmitted file. So if I come in here, I've... Yep, there it is. Okay, so I created this earlier, and I'm going to open it here. And it's going to process right here, so you'll watch it process. Uh, it's uploading the file. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. If it starts to take too long, I'll, I'll jump back over and we'll come back. Um, there it goes. So it validates the file. Now this only uploads the, ver the portions of the file that are necessary to the rendering process. Um, so it should, it should be pretty quick. There it is. Okay. Um, so this is interesting because what you can do is batch process uh, these files. Uh, so you can choose the camera views and then modify the settings, which we'll, we'll delve into a little bit later. You can see how many cloud credits it's going to cost you. So right now it's zero because I'm rendering at a standard quality. Okay, we'll, we'll talk about this in a moment. Um, it'll give me an estimated wait time. I can choose to have it email me. And uh, down here, I always find this interesting. If you were to use a 64-core rendering service, I'm sorry, this is our 64-core rendering service. This is, um, it, it'll take approximately 36 seconds to render all of these views. Um, if you were using a 16-core render farm, then it would take approximately one and a half minutes. If you were using just a two-core desktop workstation, so if you just have one computer that you have dedicated to this, it would take an hour and uh, almost an hour and a half to render the same thing. So 23 seconds versus an hour and a half on your personal workstation. That frees you up to get some work done. Okay, so I would complete this and get it uploaded. Um, I already have this done, so I'm not going to go through and, and um, waste resources doing that here. Okay, so now that we're signed in and we talked about e-transmit, um, we can talk about some of the other um, some of the other options here. There's my uh, view sky model. Okay, um, so from here you'll see that this uh, this is the render that we sent a minute ago um, from the actual program. So these have all been done previously, and you'll see I, I have 40 renderings done for this file. So when I re-uploaded that file. Um, it started rendering um, this new view that we that we chose. Um, so I can show all renderings, or, or the latest renderings. I can show all renderings. I can show just a particular version of it. So I have a version from August 26th. That's today. Or, I'm sorry, that's not today. That's um, last month. <laughs> um, or I can show show this by named view. So all those named views that were in my drawing will show up here in the list. And I can say, just look at all the top details. Ah, there it goes. Took a second to load there. All right. Um, so from here, I'm going to look at 
well, let's just take a look at this top detail for a second. Um, so this is one of the rendering views that I set up in the, in the program. If you click on the thumbnail, it will um, it'll expand out a uh, full image there for you to preview. Um, it'll give me the different uh, versions that I've uh, rendered of this particular view. So I started with this one. And if you can see, I can't zoom in any further than this, but you can see it's kind of speckled around the glass where those reflections are. Um, that's due to the render quality of that, um, of that. So this is a standard render. And then if you go in, so this is still that standard render, but I've added a background to it. This is, this is one of the standard lighting backgrounds. So it looks a little bit different, still looks a little speckled here. Um, I then went in and did a final render once I was happy with it. Um, I was happy with the lighting quality, I was happy with the uh, composition of it. And then I went in and uh, I used a couple of cloud credits to render the final image. And you can see that those speckles have been taken out and the render is much clearer in that final quality image. Now in order to do this, you can click on, and you pick any of these thumbnails and click on the little arrow here and it'll show you all of these options. Now the first thing we'll do is go into re-render using new settings. Um, any render that you upload here from AutoCAD is going to be a free, um, consider it like a draft or a preview uh, of what it's going to look like. It allows you to really quickly iterate. So if you upload it and it looks terrible, you didn't use any cloud credits to do that. It's just a nice preview. You can go back into AutoCAD, make some quick changes, send that up to the rendering service again, and um, it's cost you very little time, and uh, it hasn't cost you any cloud credits to do that. But if you are happy with it, you can come in and say re-render using new settings. Maybe I just want to tweak it a little bit. So what this does and we'll walk through the details um, one at a time here. The environment will add a, uh, an IBL background, which is image-based lighting, is a 360 degree a high dynamic range image, uh, which lights the model for you. So it'll take the lighting from that image and apply it to your model. And there are several in here uh, there's a field, crossroads, boardwalk, riverbank, and seaport. And the backgrounds are interesting, but the more interesting thing about it is the way that they light your model. And um, what you can do after you pick a background, let's just pick the field for instance, um, you can set the render quality. Now, I might still want to do a test, so if you leave this on standard, it's most likely not going to cost you any, um, any more cloud credits to re-render as a, as a low, lower quality test. Um, but if you did like this and you want to um, switch it over to a, a higher quality image, then you can pick final. All right, so the difference between that standard and final is that um, the standard is really good for um, quickly visualizing your design. And then that final render will um, lower the noise in the image, it'll um, broaden the tonal range and give you much, uh, much more clarity in that final render. Um, it does tend to take a little bit longer, so when you choose this final setting, make sure it's actually what you want to do for a, a final render. Um, you can adjust this exposure here. The one thing to note here from the AutoCAD side of things is that um, Advanced is going to be the default, and it's really your only option. Um, native is a setting that's built for Revit models, um, and I, I would imagine in the future we'll, we'll do, if it hasn't already been done, a, another webinar specifically dealing with Revit models and cloud rendering. Um, but this native option is specific to Revit. Uh, file format. There are three of them here, um, PNG, lossless, JPEG, and TIFF. Now, what you'll notice here is um, if I pick JPEG, I can't choose that alpha transparency uh, for the background. But if I change this to a PNG lossless file, I can check that alpha band for the background there. 
Um, what this will do is um, if I use, say, one of these environmental backgrounds, it will render an, an actual image of a field, and I'll show you a couple of those in a second, or a crossroads, or the boardwalk there, or the riverbank. Um, but you can remove that, and it, it acts as a transparent layer. And so you can bring that into a photo editing um, program like Photoshop or Pixlr, and add in your own custom background. And that's a really powerful tool right there. Um, so from here, you get you can see your available cloud credits. You can see how many are left. Um, I'll just change this to final so that you can see it change. So it'll recalculate and say, OK, well, you're going to use one cloud credit to render that final quality image. Um, this gives you a good idea of what's left in your account. Um, the image size over here, uh, if, um, let's see, so you can set your own custom size or you can pick one of the presets, uh, small, medium, large, extra large, they're measured in megapixels. Uh, the larger you get, the more cloud credits it costs. If I go to maximum, it's going to cost me 12 cloud credits to render that same image. Um, you can render up to 4,000 by 4,000. It does not, at the time, go any higher than 4,000 pixels. Uh, you can adjust your aspect ratio here. So if you know you want a 1 by 1 square, or you know that you want a, um, a landscape style, or, or you want it set up as portrait, or if you have a custom aspect ratio that you want to set up, you can do that. Um, 16 by 9 widescreen. So, and this will adjust. These are, uh, these are locked uh, together there. If you pick your custom one, it'll let you unlock it. Okay, so from here, I'm going to go back to that standard quality. And you'll notice that even at standard quality, um, if I choose the maximum size, it's still going to cost me some cloud credits. So I'm going to change this down to medium where it's still free just so that I can do this test image here. Um, so I've got the field in the, in the background there. I'll start the rendering. It says estimated wait time, 10 minutes. So the estimated wait time is based on the complexity of the file, um, your entitlement as a customer. If you're using a, a trial version or a, like a free student account, for example, um, those get lower priority in the queue over paid accounts. Um, let's see, what else do I have here about? Okay, so let's, while we wait for that to go, we'll take a look at a couple of others. I'd like to show you some of the backgrounds. Um, let's take a look at the view that I have there. I think it's this one. It is this one, okay. So that other one's going to render in the background there, but I'll show you. This is before I changed the, uh, that wood. Um, this is that seaport uh, background. This one here is the field. And you can see, like, you know, maybe you like the background, maybe your model does fit in it, but maybe it doesn't. And maybe you want to turn on that alpha transparency so that you can swap in your own custom background. Maybe you go out and take a, an image of the actual site that you're putting your model in, it's very easy to put that into the background now um, by using that alpha band. So again, here's the riverbank. You can see that it looks a little bit different. It's uh, it's lit a little bit differently. I love the floating uh, picnic table there. Yeah, they're they're a little bit awkward. I, guess, but I mean, you know, it's it's really it's really important to be able to take that image out of the background and substitute your own so that it does look real and it doesn't look like you have a floating image in the middle of nowhere. Um, so again, this is a crossroads, right? And so it's got like this, it's lit from a slightly different angle, it's got a slightly different temperature to the color, um, and so these are in here to help you quickly um, get a different look or feel to your, your image. And here's what it looks like without that. So it looks very different, right? Okay, so once you get these still images um, rendered, there are some other options in here that are really cool. Um, let me look at all renderings. 
and we'll take a look. So this is still going to sit there and, and render. It's going to take it a few minutes. Um, you'll see this little green icon, and that means that it's still working. Um, typically, if you hover over it, it might give you an estimate. It says that it was submitted three minutes ago. Um, sometimes I'll give you an estimate over it. That one's not doing it. Um, I'll start another one to, to show you the estimate in a minute. Um, so let's walk through some of these other types, though. So up here, you'll see these filters. Still images, panoramas, solar studies, illuminance studies. Uh, lighting analysis is something we won't cover because it's not relevant to AutoCAD, as far as I could tell in my... Uh, in my, my uh, research here, um, turntables, and then stereo panoramas. So I can turn these on and off. So if I only want to see one or two of them, um, I can quickly toggle them like this, and they'll show up in the little stream there. Uh, so let me show you a little bit. So this one is, and if you hover over it, it'll give you those details that you're looking for. It'll give you the environment, the image size that you chose. Um, and tell you what it is. I believe this is a, uh, is this one a panorama? Ah, uh, this one, yeah, this one is a panorama. So the panorama will give you a 360 degree rendered image, and if, if you can see that, I'm not moving the mouse or anything. That's just rotating on its own. Um, so if you open it in here, it'll just kind of uh, rotate the view for you. Uh, note in the upper left, it is giving me a little time estimate here. Um, it, it's, still, it's still thinking about it, but it will eventually populate with an estimated time. There it goes. Uh, remaining time is two minutes. So pretty quick compared to a local render of the same quality, right? Okay, so from here you can um, in the panorama, you can twist it around. You can see that 360-degree image. You can see there's the sun. That's the location that it's coming from, and the model is lit from that direction. Um, you can just click and drag around in the browser to do this. Uh, you can expand this full screen to get a better, better look at it. I hope I'm not making anybody seasick here. Um, from here, you can zoom in on it if you want to see it up close. Um, this is not a final quality render, so it's a little grainy. But if I was pretty comfortable with this and I liked it, then I could go ahead and render that final quality, and it'll come in a little bit more detailed. Um, one of the great things about this cloud rendering service is that if you're ever in doubt about something, these little uh, information icons are pretty useful. Um, if you want to dig into what these settings mean, um, sometimes they'll pop up and hover. Sometimes they'll open a whole help page that'll delve into the details of what you're trying to do. Okay. So that is the uh, 360 panorama. What else? I had a couple notes about that here. Um, okay, so they are, it's built out of six images. It's a, a cube. So imagine you're standing in the middle of a cube. Um, it's built out of six images. And the, um, when you go to render them, let me pick one that's not a panorama already. When I go to render as, I can pick panorama or any of these here. If I pick panorama, um, it's going to ask me for the width. Now the width is the, um, defines those uh, cubes or the, those sides of the cube. So it'll be 10, um, 1024 by 1024 pixels or all the way up to 4,000 by 4,000 pixels per side of the cube. So these tend to, to take a lot of cloud credits in order to render, especially that final quality. I'll give you a look. I see I, I would run through pretty much all of my, uh, my cloud credits there if I were to do that. But if you need that and it's for a, a client and that'll help you win a job, you might want to consider it. Okay, so those are our panoramas. Uh, the next thing I wanted to look at, and this is, this is great, I'm just going to turn off the still images and the panorama. And what do I have left? I have the illuminance studies, the turntables, and there's my stereo panorama. Where's my solar study? Let's use this one. 
Okay, I have a solar study down here from one of the previous models we used. So the solar study, if I click on it, um, will do exactly that. It'll uh, do a solar study on your model. So I'll play this for you really quickly. And you can see the light change. And it simulates the sunlight based on the geolocation in your model and, um, and the lighting conditions, uh, date and time of year, that kind of thing. Um, so it'll do the solar study there. You can, uh, well, let's take a look. I'll use this one as an example. We'll go into solar study. And you'll see you have the option to pick um, the date. So you can pick a start date and an end date and then the start time and end time of the day, and then the interval. So if you want to do, you know, one frame every 15 minutes over the course of a day, or you want to do, you know, one frame every month out of the year to get an idea of what the sunlight would look like at a particular time of day um, throughout the year, uh, you can customize uh, the interval there to suit your needs. So it makes for a great uh, site model study. Okay, the next one here, um, the lighting analysis, uh, not lighting analysis, the um, illuminance study. So the illuminance study will, um, it, it performs a simulation, a light simulation on your model to um, to analyze the lighting, either um, natural light or artificial light within your design. And this comes in really handy for um, if you're seeking LEED certification for a building. Um, so you can do this either indoors or, or outdoors. Um, and it'll show you basically a, a heat map in, um, uh, it's measured in incident lux. And depending on whether you're exporting from AutoCAD or Revit, you'll get different options here. But uh, let, me, let me show you. Um, so here are the settings. And if you did this and you wanted to come in and change the settings, you could just do that re-render as new settings thing. Um, so we'll get the location and time. So you can pick your date and your time. Uh, or you can use the date from the model if, uh, if you had one assigned. Um, the legend will let you, so it'll let you measure this in units of foot candles or lux, depending on the lighting units that you're, that you want to measure. Um, you can set the minimum and maximum. Um, you can adjust uh, either automatic or logarithmic um, lighting types there. Uh, you can adjust the sky model. Now the sky model, um, it uses a haze value. And this just, it simulates the amount of water vapor or particulates in the air. Um, let's see. So you can also set the, the size of the image, the so same settings that you have in, in the rest of the rendering options here um, are available. So the most interesting thing to me here is, is that you can use this um, to uh, support your application for uh, lead certification for a building. That's really useful. Um, let's jump into, let's go to the turntable first and then we'll talk about the stereo panorama. So the turntable, now notice that the background stays the same here. The turntable will actually turn your model. Um, this is something that um, I think is a little bit more useful for Fusion 360 product design, that kind of thing. Um, so it rotates your model instead of rotating the entire scene. Um, we'll take a look at a couple of the settings here, but I'm not going to delve too deeply into this one. Um, so you can set the number of frames that it's going to um, it's going to set up. So either six frames or 36 frames, and this basically gives you degrees of rotation. So if you wanted a smoother rotation of that image down there, you could pick 36 frames and, um, and re-render that, and it'll look a little bit smoother as it moves. And then you can stop it and physically 
twist it around if you want to as well. Uh, the stereo panorama is really cool if you have a VR headset, uh, something like an Oculus Rift, or if you have like um, Google Cardboard only costs a few dollars uh, to get if you have a smartphone that you can pair it with. And so the stereo panorama has the, you know, the same general settings, your, your background, your render quality, your exposure, and your width. Um, but the cool thing about this is that you can view it in a VR headset. So it gets you that same panorama look, except you can actually get inside your model. And uh, it's really hard to demonstrate that in a uh, live presentation like this. Um, but if you do have um, access to a Google Cardboard and a smartphone, it might be worth testing this out. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, you can download it to your phone. Um, you can check this little box here, it says preview on your phone, and it'll generate a URL that you can send to yourself or send to your friends or your client um, and view that on your smartphone. Um, I think there, there's also, there should also be a QR code that you could, yeah, there it is, okay, it was generating it. Uh, the, so it'll generate this QR code, and you can just scan that if you have a QR scanner on your smartphone um, instead of having to send the actual link. So you can download any of these images um, just by using some of the... Um, so this one's cool because you can uh, download the stereo pano for Gear VR, um, or you can just download the zip file there. Uh, let's see. Did I miss anything? I don't think I did. You can download the turntables as uh, HTML or as a video, so an MP4 file. Okay, so I have a couple of these images. Um, right in here that I wanted to show you as a side-by-side. -side. So, let me find this. There it is. Okay. So here are a couple of the images that I rendered in AutoCAD directly. So these took about 10 minutes to render each. And I will send you all of these files. They'll be in the, the data set at the end. But there's a rough approximation of what that looks like coming out of the program, tying up my resources for 10 minutes. Um, the same image right here. Let's take a look at this one. So this is that final quality one that I did there. And this took seconds in the, uh, in the cloud rendering service. And then what I did was I used that background, uh, that alpha background, uh, to make this transparent. And then I opened it in Pixlr and inserted my own custom background to make it look like grass instead of that. Um, yeah, instead of this um, rocky looking uh, image. That's the background image from the field. Uh, the field background. So I like the lighting from that, but I, I wanted to add my own custom background. This looks a little nicer. So um, There's that panorama. I'll send this along as well, as well as a solar study and a couple of these. And did I have anything else before we... I want to show you something cool. I just want to make sure that I covered everything here. Um, Yeah, let's jump right in. I want to show you Pixlr for a second. So this is, um, this is just an Autodesk uh, photo editor. Um, it is free. If you have an Autodesk account, you can sign in with that, I believe. Um, if you go to web apps, so this is, sorry, I'll slow down for a second. Um, this is pixlr, P-I-X-L-R dot com slash web. 
Um, this will get you to the web apps section. I want the editor here. I'll launch the web app editor. All right, so I'm going to open my image. Scroll down here, I'll get my final top-down image. And then I want to open my custom background, which I put in here. It's just a nice quality grass image there for the background. All right, so you notice that instead of showing up as a white background or that, um, or that field background, you get that alpha transparency, which shows up as this checkered uh, bit here. So I'll notice over on the right, oh, no, not over on the right. I can check my image size here. So it's 2,000 pixels wide. Um, and then this one is 1,024. So I'm actually going to, just for sake of time, shrink this one down to 1,000 pixels across. And then I'm going to select this one and copy it and paste it in here. And this works just like layers in Photoshop. If you ever use Photoshop, you can drag and drop them to make one appear behind the other. And now I have that grass background behind my original image. You can zoom in on that to see it. And I have this weird anomaly over here. I can create another layer here and uh, pick a paintbrush grab the same color as my tile there and just get rid of it. And there's my final image. All right, so that about covers it um, for cloud rendering from AutoCAD. And um, I, I hope this was useful. Uh, I think, Dave, if you want to take the presentation back and we'll wrap it up real quick. And we have a couple minutes for questions at the end. Yep. Um, let me just uh, get back to my screen here. All right. Uh, so, whoop, just go back here. So just uh, there's some additional resources uh, that uh, is also going to be in the PowerPoint slide here. So some information about rendering, doing solar studies, etc. Um, again, uh, the, the, all these links are, will be in the, in the PowerPoint that um, you have access to from either the chat window or from the post-webinar survey, etc. Uh, the wrong way. And just uh, want to thank everybody for joining us. Um, if you have any future ideas, we had a couple of suggestions uh, in the chat window. Uh, please uh, send any additional suggestions you have uh, in the last couple of minutes here as we go through. And we just got uh, one more quick survey that we want to do. Uh, see if I can get that. One more poll. And uh, basically want to know if uh, you learned something new today. If uh, Victoria was excellent, like she usually is, in teaching a little bit about what's going on, and uh, looks like the vast majority have learned something new, and uh, hopefully you can give this uh, cloud, cloud rendering a try. I said, uh, you know, you get some free cloud cloud credits. That's hard to say. Cloud credits uh, just to you know, kind of give a, a little test here, if you if you wish. Um, so uh, you know, you can. Give it a try without it really costing you anything, and then if you need cloud credits, then you can uh, purchase them as well. And uh, I guess we'll see if we have uh, a couple of quick questions. Oops, wrong one. So there was a, a question about uh, the cost of, cl of cloud credits, and. Uh, you want sure. to talk about that real quick? Yeah, I, I know and I think it fluctuates a little bit, but it, it's approximately a dollar per cloud credit last time I checked. Okay. Um, I did miss one thing, so if you could give me the, uh, 
the screen back for a second. Sure. Let's see. Oh, I'll, I'll, take I'll, it. yeah, I'll take it from you. There we go. <laughs> okay. Um, I know that I did miss. So if you want to adjust, um, I'm going to show some images here. Uh, if you want to adjust the exposure of a final image, you can do that. Um, from here, you don't have to go back to AutoCAD or tweak your settings or re-render the whole image. Um, you can adjust these exposure settings here using the sliders and, it, and your highlights here, your midtones, your shadows, uh, saturation, and then white point. Um, so that there is, uh, that there is pretty useful. Um, so that if you apply it to the image, it'll change it really quickly for you without having to re-render the, the whole thing. It, uh, it's a quicker render. It does re-render it for you, but it's, it's much quicker. Um, so, uh, so there's two quick questions that I think sure. that maybe we have time for before we uh, get to the top of the hour. Uh, one was about, um, you know, if you're re-rendering the same model but you're only making slight changes, is that a, not considered a new render? You know, cost you additional cloud credits, or you know, do you get to use the same credits for it? I don't think you use the same credits for it um, because it is like I mean, if you're making changes to your model and then re-uploading that model, um, you'll see the new renders in the um, uh, in that in the stream here. And you'll see, like, you know, you can see the latest ones. So these are the last 10 that I did, but I have over 40 different images for this model. Uh, the only time you're really charged for them, though, is, is if you're doing a high-quality render. So my recommendation is to make sure that you're, um, uh, you're doing those uh, quick iterations um, in that draft or that standard. Uh, setting at a lower resolution to get it right and then use your cloud credits on that final render when you're absolutely sure that it's a final image that you're going to send out to a client. Right. Thanks. And uh, last question is, and I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this one as well, but uh, basically does a, the graphics card you have on your machine make any difference as far as rendering time and such? That would not. Um, it. So the um, the rendering service is our own cloud farm. Uh, so instead of using the resources on your machine, you're using our resources, uh, our hardware. Right. Okay. Well, um, just want to thank everybody for joining today. It's at the top of the hour. So uh, we're going to go ahead and end the webinar at this point. Uh, if you have any additional suggestions for any topics, uh, you know, please either send them in or you can email the, uh, the um, uh, address that was at the beginning of the PowerPoint with uh, suggestions as well. Okay, and thank you. thank you very much. Thank you so much. Have a good one. See you next week.